our show today with breaking news out of Japan. Former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has died in the hospital. Investigation into the assassination of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Prime Minister's association with a religious group he blamed for his mother's financial ruin. A nation in shock. The longest serving Prime Minister in Japanese history assassinated while giving a public speech. Nothing like this has happened in the country since 1936, an event no one expected would ever happen again. What was first assumed to be a politically motivated attack was later clarified to be something else entirely. The man who pulled the trigger calmly shared his story. This was not about politics, instead it was about religion, or what some would instead call a cult. The Unification Church. A young man blamed the organisation for a ruined life. This young man grew, and so too did his hatred for those who he deemed responsible, until one day, he enacted his revenge. Shinzo Abe, born 21st of September 1954, was a polarising figure throughout his long political career. A staunch conservative whom was often described by detractors or opponents as a right-wing Japanese nationalist. Despite this, he managed to do what no other Japanese politician had done before him. Taking office first in 2006, Shinzo Abe resigned just a year later, citing health concerns. In September of 2012, he made a return to the spotlight as the re-elected leader of the LDP party, and defeated their opponent in a 108-89 vote to yet again become Prime Minister. He made many controversial statements throughout his time in office, including that of a revisionist history regarding Japanese war crimes in World War II, which caused tensions throughout the region with China and South Korea. Despite these and many other controversies surrounding his position and policy, Shinzo Abe as Prime Minister managed to beat out oppositions in two more elections, 2014 and 2017, before he elected to resign yet again in 2020 due to the relapse of those prior health concerns. Despite all the controversy, Shinzo Abe was loved by many within Japan. His legacy is that of complexity and division among all who followed his career. Somewhere along the way, however, Shinzo Abe is accused to have been involved in an organisation that is perhaps more controversial than the peaks and valleys of his political career. In the modern world, a charismatic leader can spread their word and gain followers. This can be described in two different ways, depending on a few factors and your perspective on how that group operates. The first is a pejorative term, cult. The second is NRM, or New Religious Movement. The major difference between the two is how are members recruited and treated, as well as with a cult often being more of a social movement versus a purely religious one. Which brings us to the Unification Church, and where that is classified between these two terms. Originally founded in 1954, South Korea by Sun Myung Moon, the Unification Church is a massive, multifaceted organisation that has spread across the globe. Some of the cliff notes as to why some call this organisation a cult stems from the original leader Moon and his claim to be the Messiah. He fervently believed that he was the second coming of Christ, and his followers were to not only believe this, but spread the word in hopes of recruiting more people to the church and his cause. Members of the Unification Church are often referred to as Moonies, named of course after their great leader, who is described within the Divine Principle texts as the one man sent by God to resolve the fundamental problems of human life and the universe. Now as to how this South Korean organisation has anything to do with Shinzo Abe, Japan and an assassination, all comes down to how exactly the Unification Church is funded. Around 70% of the church's funding comes from the nation of Japan, and particularly what they refer to as spiritual sales. Moonies will research the deaths of Japanese citizens and then travel door to door claiming to be in contact with the recently deceased loved ones of families they are targeting. The claim is that if the family does not give money to the church, the deceased will not find their way into heaven. Due to this and many other factors, the Unification Church, despite the name, is said to cause conflict and erosion of families. Followers are sometimes instructed to marry the church's choice, or to give over so much money that it would jeopardise the safety and the stability of any family involved. 
Due to the widespread operation of the Unification Church and the amount of funding they are able to procure, they have deep ties to many political organisations across the globe and have been involved in policy, either publicly or privately, in many, many countries. After World War II, the first elected Prime Minister of Japan was a man by the name of Nobusuke Kishi. As Prime Minister, he assisted in bringing the Unification Church to Japan. Nobusuke Kishi had a son by the name of Shintaro Abe, who became Japan's Foreign Minister. He, of course, was also heavily involved with the church, and as you would have guessed, Shinzo Abe is the son and grandson of these two men. All three of them are alleged to have been at many of the services for the church for multiple decades, and they are not alone, as many other high-ranking Japanese politicians have been linked with the Unification Church, and subsequently with the Moonies. This information, while known publicly, did not take any form of media centre stage or seem to be deemed a problem until July 8th of 2022, the day that Shinzo Abe was carrying out his duties at a political event outside a train station in Nara City. During his speech, a man with a homemade firearm walked up behind him and opened fire. The first shot missed. Shinzo Abe turned around to see what the noise was, and the second shot landed. The suspect was arrested immediately and taken for questioning, which is where he calmly revealed the reason for the day's events. Tetsuya Yamagami was born September 10th, 1980, in a privileged household. His grandfather on the maternal side owned a local construction company, which his parents of course helped to run, and the family was generally quite affluent in the area. Tragedy struck early in Tetsuya's life. In 1984, his father took his own life. As he grew up, he grew close to his uncle as a result. Everything progressed relatively normal from there, that is, until the death of his grandfather. This was when things started to really go wrong for the family and get out of control. Tetsuya's mother took over the construction company, but clearly struggled with the death of her father and her husband. In the 90s, to deal with the loss she'd suffered, Tetsuya's mother joined the Unification Church. She regularly attended gatherings, taking her three children with her as much as possible. Tetsuya, now a teenager, watched his mother donate every penny that the family had remaining, starting with around $720,000, which were all of their savings, followed by a parcel of land her father had left her, and even the house the mother and three children were living in. This caused the family to declare bankruptcy in 2002. The bankruptcy, however, didn't stop the mother from donating to the church. Tetsuya and his siblings were neglected to the point they regularly needed to contact their uncle to deliver them food, as their mother was too busy at the church and prioritised giving the money to them instead of buying food for her children. Due to this financial situation, Tetsuya had little option but to leave home without the education he longed for, as the family just had no money for him to go to college. As a result, he joined the Japan Maritime Self-Defence Force, where he was posted to Kyo Naval Base and the destroyer JS Matsuyuki. Three years later, in 2005, he attempted to take his own life so that his siblings could collect his life insurance policy. Things were just that bad. A few years later, his older brother was diagnosed with lymphoma, a disease he struggled with for many years, and of course couldn't resolve due to financial restraints for medical bills. This brother took his own life to escape the disease and financial burden in 2015. Tetsuya by this point blamed the misfortune of his entire life on the Unification Church and the Moonies. He researched the group with an obsession and planned to assassinate the leader. However, he discovered the Shinzo Abe connection and decided that his grudge was with the man who helped spread the church's influence in Japan, which ultimately consumed his mother and ruined his family's life. On July 7th, just one day before the attack, Tetsuya sent a letter to a blog editor who reported on problems experienced by children of religious cult believers. The letter reads, I once wrote to you that I want a gun so bad that a hand might as well come out of my throat to reach for one. Since then and now, I have devoted myself to procuring a gun. My devotion resembled that of the Unification Church followers, who discard all but their entire life in the name of a false god. My fateful encounter with the Unification Church goes back about 30 years. My mother, since having entered the religion, wasted over a hundred million yen, our family's collapse, bankruptcy, 
As such things went by and my teenage years were over, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that this experience continued to distort the rest of my entire life. While I did loathe Abe, he is not the primary enemy. He is no more than one sympathiser of the Unification Church, one who has great influence in the real world. This letter was discovered days after the assassination and later released to the Japanese media along with the story of Tetsuya Yamagami. With nothing left to lose and having accomplished part of his mission, the now 41-year-old man described his previous attempts to remove high-ranking members of the church from this mortal realm. From the time of bankruptcy over 20 years ago, he would walk the church halls with a knife, searching for the opportunity to find the South Korean leaders of the church. He made plans to burn another member with a Molotov cocktail in 2019, but had to give up due to the inability to access the church on that given day. He considered making homemade explosives, but didn't want to harm innocent bystanders, instead electing to make homemade firearms. Tetsuya Yamagami spent the majority of his adult life searching for retribution. On July 8th, 2022, he enacted that vengeance. The Chinese government has begun an official investigation into the Unification Church. There have been months of revelations about links between the religious group and the governing Liberal Democratic Party. In the immediate aftermath of the event, there was panic and uncertainty. Politicians cancelled plans and campaign appearances out of respect as well as safety concerns. No one knew what else could happen, or even why this had happened. After Tetsuya Yamagami's questioning, the letters and his tweets were publicised, it raised more concerns and questions than if this was purely politically motivated. Questions were being asked by media both foreign and domestic. How much of this was true, and how deep did it run? Did the Unification Church have these political affiliations, and if they did, to what end? In a surprise, the Unification Church did confirm the story, though they left out key details. A representative confirmed the Yamagami family were part of the church for that period of time, and that they donated money, but didn't confirm a dollar value. They also denied that Shinzo Abe was involved with them, just that he gave friendly speeches for their affiliated organisations. Then there was infighting among the Moonies from Korea, with a statement released expressing guilt over the death of Shinzo Abe, a prominent leader of the Moonies claimed he wanted to reform the actions of the church in Japan, striking the practice of spiritual sales completely from the organisation. Unfortunately, the other leaders were having none of it. They saw the massive financial benefit, and they didn't want to let go. In fact, they went so far as to deny everything he said, instead claiming that the media discussing these topics were tantamount to hate speech and threats against their followers which is why they organised protests where they transported over 3,000 people from their Korean facility right to the streets of Seoul to rally against Japanese media. Most of the participants in this rally were Japanese women who were married to Korean men through their arranged marriage system. As if that wasn't enough, they also started to sue Japanese media outlets or even talk show guests for defamation whenever they talked about the assassination, potentially being linked to the Unification Church. In Japan, on a political level, the leader of the LDP reshuffled his cabinet with the aim to closely examine each member for any affiliation to the Moonies, though only after massive percentage drop-offs in the party's approval ratings. On a civil level, reports and studies started to surface that showed close to $40 million reported as damages from over 400 victims of the church from the year 2017 until 2020. The reason the lawyers reported this money as damages is that the victims claimed to have been coerced into donating the money under false pretense. On October 16th, 2022, Japanese Prime Minister Kishida announced a probe which would assess the allegations against the Unification Church operation within the nation. Should any of this prove true, the organisation would be officially dissolved within Japanese territory. Which brings us to the public's reaction. To some, Tetsuya Yamagami was deemed a hero, a fighter of freedom, and hailed as an icon. T-shirts were sold in his name, people were cosplaying as him on the day he actually performed the assassination, movies were released detailing his life on the day of Shinzo Abe's funeral, petitions were filed to drastically reduce his sentence, and there was widespread support for his actions. The issue here is doing so could cause others to try to resolve their own problems in life with those same radical methods. And that is how the most polarising figure in recent Japanese politics was assassinated 
due to his alleged involvement in an organisation that has solicited billions of dollars from grieving Japanese families. 